Hello, I am OM System Ambassador Matt Seuss, and today we are going to be taking a look at high res mode in the OM System OM1 camera. If you want to squeeze the very best detail and image quality out of the images that you're shooting with this camera, you're going to want to take a look at high res mode. Now in high res mode, we have two options. We can use handheld high res and we can use tripod high res mode. Handheld high res mode is going to give us a 50 million pixel image, a 50 megapixel image. Tripod high res mode is gonna give us an 80 million pixel image, an 80 megapixel image. Now how is it that the camera can do this? Well, what the camera is doing is it's relying on the brand new stacked BSI Live MOS sensor in conjunction with the brand new TruePic X image processor. And it's also using the advanced IBIS in the camera, the in-body image stabilization, in particular with the handheld high-res shots, all combined to produce these high-resolution images. Now, in handheld high-res mode, the 50 megapixel mode, the camera, when you're holding the camera, it's going to take 12 different shots and combine them all into one massive file. So you have 12 different 20 megapixel images. It saves the very first 20 megapixel image. You'll notice that as a .ORI file. And the other 11 images are combined with that initial image to produce a 240 megapixel image in camera that is then downsized to the 50 megapixel image. And that is what you're left with, and that's an ORF file. In handheld mode, the IBIS is working in conjunction with the camera, moving the sensor just a tiny little bit, little microns adjustments here and there to get you that 50 megapixel image. Now in tripod high res mode, the camera is taking eight individual photos, saving that very first one, the .ORI file, the 20 megapixel file, but also combining it with seven additional files to give you an 80 megapixel image. When it is doing that, it automatically turns off the IBIS system so it can move that sensor around just a little micron adjustments here and there to produce that 80 megapixel file. Now, why would you want to have such a large file? Well, by shooting in the high res modes, it's going to give you a whole lot of advantages. For one, there'll be a slight increase in dynamic range. There'll be a slight decrease in noise. You'll have more accurate colors. There'll be more detail in your shots. Plus you'll have all those extra pixels that if you need to, you can crop into your image a whole lot and still have a lot of pixels left over. Now I'll note one limitation of using the high res mode and that is for, it is primarily for static subjects. You're not going to want to be using this for birds in flight. However, if a bison is laying down in the ground not moving, it'd be a perfect opportunity to try one of the high res modes. Portraits you can try with the high res mode too. I'd recommend using the handheld high res mode for portraits. For landscapes, definitely using this for landscapes. And I wouldn't be too concerned if there's a little bit of a wind and it's maybe blowing the grass in your foreground. I've actually gotten some really nice shots with the grass movement in the foreground in the high res mode. Same thing if you have any running water, it can actually smooth out the water as well. Night sky shots under certain conditions can also work with the high res mode. And photographing artwork. My fiance is a professional painter and we photograph her artwork all the time in tripod high res mode to get all of the detail of all the brush strokes. Other shooting scenarios would definitely include architecture and real estate photography. Now let's go ahead and take a look in the menu to see how we can activate the high res mode and all the settings that are involved in it. So to do your settings in the high res mode, simply hit the menu button and then go to the computational modes, the purple, the very first window that you have there in the computational modes under high res shot, hit the OK button. And then here we are, we have high res shot off, hit the OK button, and then you can switch between high res on the tripod and high res handheld. Let's go ahead and take a look at high res handheld first. Hit the OK button. And then here we are, we have different settings for the files that we can adjust. So we can have a 50 megapixel JPEG fine, a 25 megapixel JPEG fine. We can have a combined JPEG and RAW, 50 megapixel fine JPEG with the RAW, or a 25 megapixel fine JPEG with the RAW file. Normally I'm shooting with the 50 megapixel fine JPEG plus RAW. The wait time, we can adjust the wait time and that is the delay between when you press the shutter and when the camera starts actually taking the picture. For handheld high res, I recommend leaving that at zero. And for handheld high res, there is no charge time at all available for flash sync in this mode. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the tripod high res mode. So I'll go back into the menu and I'll select tripod high res mode. 
And let's go ahead down here, and now we can see that we can choose an 80 megapixel fine JPEG, a 50 megapixel fine JPEG, and a 25 megapixel fine JPEG. Also shooting with the 80 megapixel fine JPEG plus RAW, 50 megapixel JPEG and RAW, and 25 megapixel JPEG and RAW. I personally always end up shooting with the 80 megapixel fine and RAW. The wait time, this is important to select. Normally I'll have this at at least one second, if not two seconds. Having this little bit of a delay allows you to take your hands off the camera once you press the shutter button. If you have it set up for two seconds, it's gonna wait two seconds so the camera gets nice and still without any movement from your hand and then it's gonna take that picture. We also have some settings here for charge time if you were using a flash sync. And you can set that for up to 30 seconds uh, in between shots. Now I want to show you a really cool shortcut that OM System built into this camera, getting you really quick and easy access to the high res mode. It involves holding onto the record button on the very top of the camera, and then with your thumb turning the rear dial. What ends up happening when you do that is, let's go ahead and get out of there, and if I press and hold onto the record button and then start turning the thumb dial, I can now easily quickly switch between high res shot off, tripod, and handheld high res. Now another cool thing about this shortcut is that once you have it set up and let's say you're just always shooting handheld high res mode and then sometimes you take it out of high res mode because there's an animal walking by, all you have to do is just hit that record button once and it'll automatically go back to the high res mode that you were in before. And in this case here, I happen to be in the handheld high res mode. Hit that record button again, it turns off high res mode so then I can just go ahead and take a regular shot. Hit that record button again, I am instantly back in high res mode. If all of a sudden I'm switching to a tripod, hit your thumb while holding onto that record button, use your thumb to hit that dial, turn that dial, and then put it back into tripod high res mode. Now another huge benefit with the new OM-1, with the new processor, with the new sensor, is the speed that you have now with the high res modes. And I did some unscientific tests here out in my backyard just before I recorded this video, and I was using a shutter speed of 500, and what I ended up having for the test that I was doing here, for the high res mode, the 80 megapixel mode, my OM-1 was averaging 4.4 seconds. My OMD EM1 Mark III, that was averaging 7.3 seconds. So the OM1, 1.6 times faster. That is a huge speed increase. In the handheld high res mode, the EM1 Mark III, I was shooting at an average of 15.96 seconds. It took the camera to take the picture and do all the processing. And before I could take another shot, 15.96 seconds, that has now decreased to 6.05 in my unofficial testing that I was doing earlier today. That is 2.64 times faster in the new OM-1 compared to the EM-1 Mark III. That is huge, and let me tell you why. I was testing this out with some really cold temperatures around zero degrees Fahrenheit, only having to wait six seconds or so for a handheld high res shot as opposed to 16, almost 16 seconds on average. That is a huge difference in terms of how many shots I can get while I'm freezing out in the cold. And you know, when the light is changing really fast, you don't wanna be waiting 16 seconds on average for the camera to process and, and do that file and having it go for six seconds at a time when the light is changing really fast, that is an amazing improvement. Now your times are gonna be a little bit different, of course, if you're doing slower shutter speeds, let's say one second. So remember, if you're in handheld high res mode, it's taken 12 different shots, so that's 12 seconds plus the processing time. And in tripod high res mode, that'd be eight different shots, again, one second at a time plus the processing time. Let's go ahead and take a look at just how quickly this is. Now we'll take a look here. I am in tripod high res mode. I also have this set up for a two second delay. Again, remember when I hit the shutter button, it's gonna wait and pause two seconds and then it's gonna take the photo. I'll focus and then I'll hit, we're waiting two seconds. Now it's processing the, now it took the image and now it's doing the processing and that is it. It is that fast for tripod high res mode. And then if we go ahead and review the image, we can go up here and take a look. We can see that we are at 10,368 pixels by 7,776. That is our 80 megapixel file. We can go ahead and take a look and zoom in here. And we just have a ton of detail in this image that we can work with. 
Now in tripod high res mode, we are limited with our ISO. We can only go up to 1600. But if we go ahead and we switch to handheld high res mode and take a look at the ISO, we can now go 6400 used to be the limit for the EM1 Mark III, but we can go above 6400 all the way up to 25,600, which is the native high ISO on the OM1. Not only that, we can go above that in the extension all the way up to ISO 102,400, again, in the handheld high res mode. Now, in conclusion, I'll leave you with a few tips on using the high res mode. When you're in tripod high res mode, you're gonna want a sturdy tripod. Remember, once that starts taking that image, that little sensor is moving just microns and just doing these little movements around here. Any movement at all, any shake from your tripod is gonna affect that in a negative way. You'll also wanna use the sharpest glass that you have. Fortunately, OM System has a ton of sharp lenses that you can use with the high res mode. And speaking about sharpness, these files love sharpening. OM Workspace does a great job bringing out the sharpness and the detail in these files, or you may prefer to use other raw programs and even other extra plugins for sharpening. These files love the extra sharpening that you can give them. When you are photographing handheld, be sure to hold the camera as steady as you can and as nice and supportive as you can. Keep your hand underneath the lens, camera, uh, other hand right over here, nice and secure. Help out that image stabilization by having a secure platform to photograph from. I have been able to do uh, handheld high res shots with one hand, but when I can, I always try and have those two hands to hold it securely. And lastly, take a couple extra shots too when you're out there photographing in the handheld high res. Because every once in a while, there's a little bit of movement, maybe from your tripod, maybe from you moving, or a little bit of subject movement. Give yourself a couple extra shots in the high res mode just to make sure that you have those files and that they are nice and sharp and detailed. Once again, that is shooting in high res mode on the OM System OM1 camera. I'm Matt Seuss, and thanks for watching.